For decades, Texas Instruments' monopolistic prevalence in U.S. classrooms has allowed them to charge ridiculous sums of money while slowly removing features from their calculators. However, that might be about to change this summer. After testing four prototypes over three and a half years, I've put my own money on the line to support a new company called Zero that aims to offer a better calculator with a familiar interface. I won't get my production model until September, but I can cover the most recent prototype. I'm pleased to see Zero has made great strides since their first prototype. The design has morphed from a T84 plus CE copycat, to a lawsuit avoider, to this design, which is more T84 plus CE inspired. The obvious difference being the circular buttons, full-sized function buttons, and arrow keys on the left instead of the right. Looking at the outside of the prototype, there's a replaceable rubber bumper to protect it from side impacts, a charging LED that changes color as the calculator charges, TI actually took this away from the T84 Plus CE a few years ago, and there's also USB-C, which supports data transfer and something I'm really excited about, 7.5 watt charging. I remember lending out calculators to half a dozen classmates during final exams who pulled out their calculator only to realize it was completely dead and no one has the weird mini USB charging cable. That's why I'm so thrilled you can plug in your Zero with the same USB-C charger you use for your phone and laptop. By charging three times faster than a TID4 Plus CE, you can get a full hour of battery life in just five minutes. This prototype's battery lasted over an hour longer than my TID4 Plus CE, but unfortunately I couldn't get a direct comparable test and I'll explain why later. Nevertheless, the result is still promising. The battery isn't as easy to replace as the T84 Plus CE, but the only major hurdle is finding the right Allen key to remove the four screws on the back shell. I'll link a video by Tiny Hacker below that goes into a full teardown. I did have some hiccups while performing the battery test. This prototype shuts itself down at 7% and wouldn't charge past 97%. My guess is the whole battery is actually being used, but the battery calibration needs to be adjusted to accurately represent the state of charge. The battery life doesn't mean much if the calculator is difficult to use though. What's it like to type on and switch to from a T84 Plus CE? As someone who heavily used one for over 9 years, it didn't take me as long as I expected to get used to the layout. This familiar key layout is hugely beneficial for students and teachers since it will be easier to follow tutorials that are made for the T84 Plus CE. I have mixed feelings about the buttons. They're a bit more firm than a T84 Plus CE, stiffer than I prefer, but they have great key responsiveness and I generally really like typing on them. However, occasionally this prototype's second alpha and function keys will get stuck in the down position. And although I find the font legible, many keys have very different font sizes which makes some buttons, like the trig functions, look out of place compared to the surrounding smaller fonts. On the previous prototype, the font sizes were much more consistent, so I hope Zero will find a middle ground with the font size, and also fix the key sticking issue on the production model. Onto the screen, this has the same resolution and maximum brightness as the T84 Plus CE. However, at its lowest brightness, it will turn the backlight completely off, which might be useful in some battery saving circumstances. I really like the included dark mode, which is enabled by default. However, annoyingly, the display installation is ever so slightly crooked. However, I didn't notice this myself until another beta tester pointed it out. It's never bothered me personally, but you may be more sensitive to it. Let's take a look at the software, which feels about 90% complete. Zero has put a lot of time into the software, but they've had multiple setbacks with hardware changes and learning the hard way that computers don't like handling decimals. Thankfully, Zero did the right thing, and they bit the bullet and rewrote their calculation engine, which seriously improved accuracy. In previous beta OS versions, checking if 0.1 plus 0.2 equals 0.3 would return false. However, on newer software, it returns true as it should. This common benchmark really shows the accuracy improvement. Basically, what we're doing is applying, then undoing trig functions. Lastly, we subtract the original number. The ideal result is zero. However, all calculators without a computer algebra system can only get close to zero. 
this newer OS is many orders of magnitude more accurate than the previous OS version. Unfortunately, this accuracy came at the cost of performance. TI Planet showed the Zero has dropped from consistently being among the fastest calculators on the market to being more middle of the pack, despite more modern hardware. It's still 4 to 8 times faster than a TID4 Plus CE at all calculations and graphing tasks, but for a modern ARM processor clocked at 240 MHz, one would expect significantly better performance. Hopefully another software update can resolve the bottlenecks, but we will just have to wait and see. When actually using this beta software, I've noticed the math is solid, but it's still common to get unexpected behavior. For example, deleting a number with an exponent makes the exponent a normal number. Functions like integrals that require a variable in certain areas don't automatically type a letter when you press a key. Nothing on its own is a deal breaker, however, lots of little things can add up to be an unpleasant experience. At least the menus are very similar to the TI-84 Plus CE, which will help make following tutorials easier. I've even found some functions and menus not present on the TI-84 Plus CE, such as the hyperbolic menu and the resize function in the list menu. I feel Zero really needs to focus on the quality of life fixes because these are what users are going to interact with on the daily. The past few updates though have focused heavily on programming implementations, especially Python. This prototype has MicroPython version 1.23 built in, as well as Zero Basic. I primarily test Zero Basic, which is a similar language to TI Basic. Right now, it's most useful for automating solving repetitive equations you don't want to do by hand. Creating games just isn't stable enough. Remember when I did my battery test, but I didn't run a program, unlike my TI84 Plus CE test? That's because after half an hour of using the display command, this happens and the calculator becomes unstable. There's also an issue where displaying key commands sometimes paste the key itself rather than the ID that represents the key. Although there's issues, I do expect them to get resolved. Zero has created 150 pages of documentation on Zero Basic. And if they weren't serious about making Zero Basic, then I wouldn't expect them to put so much effort into this documentation. With that said, there certainly needs to be more quality assurance before Zero Basic is ready for prime time. I didn't get into the Python coding much myself, however I'll link TI Planet's review below, which goes into a deep dive. Some of the major improvements are adding the ability to simply send .py files to the calculator without any need for conversion. Zero has 4 megabytes of RAM that Python can utilize, which is over 200 times as much as the TI-D4 Plus CE, and even double the TI Inspire CX2. The only other calculator with more RAM for Python is the Overkill HP Prime G2, which provides 252 megabytes for Python. The number of supported libraries is vastly improved over the TI-D4 Plus CE, but you'll have to read the article for more on that and the performance benchmarks. Finally, the price. This calculator is on pre-order right now for $90. Once it starts shipping in September, that price will increase to $115. For $90, I was happy to place a pre-order, especially considering Zero isn't taking nearly as much profit margin as Texas Instruments, and I firmly believe in competition among companies, because when there's competition, consumers win. At $115, Although that's technically less than TI's suggested $150 price for the TI-84 Plus CE, you can currently get a new TI-84 Plus CE on Amazon for $115. With that said, the TI-84 Plus CE's reputation is getting beaten right now with defective batteries causing brand new units to boot loop. Zero is primed to offer more stable hardware, more performance, and faster charging for the same price. Although I've placed my pre-order, I have done so with the understanding that I enjoy being on the cutting edge, and this is a first generation device that will start out with many hiccups. If you have the same understanding and are eager to try the closest TI-84 Plus CE competitor, then Zero's website will be linked below. Comment any questions, and have a good day.